I will just start with my current research, which is essentially finishing writing a book with some colleagues, Marco, Guy, and Jean Bertrand. Uh, it has actually roughly 525 pages, missing our 75 pages. So it covers column generation, Danzig Wolf for linear programming, integer programming, uh, vehicle routing and crew scheduling, dual point of view, meaning Lagrangian relaxation and a lot of stuff like that. And finally, branch and price and conclusion. Anybody interested in reading a chapter, commenting it? You are welcome. You only have to write to one of the co-authors and it's okay. You will have a version. So let's start the presentation of today on the minimum mean cycle canceling algorithm, which is known since uh, 1989. It was designed for network pro problems. So what we know, it's a very simple primal algorithm. This is what we will see today. Uh, it has similarities with the primal simplex and the improved primal simplex designed at Gerard by Ismael and Francois and co-authors. Uh, MMCC has improving directions in, on edges, faces, and sometimes interior. There's no basis, no inverse to manage. And the pricing is defined on the relaxation of the so-called uh, residual problem. We delete the upper bounds when we find uh, the direction. Complexity analysis largely uses the dual properties. So it is polynomial on network problems. And so given a set of arcs A and nodes N, the first paper, we have the result of order A and log N phases. Five years later, again, Goldberg and a student, Radzik, they found order of A times N phases. And in his thesis, Jean-Bertrand Gauthier found the same number of phases, but a much faster pricing problem. So we will adapt most of the things to linear programs. I won't give the proof of all the theorems because everybody would sleep after three hours. Me too. So let's start. So we have a linear program in standard form, size m constraints and variables. From any solution xk to the next one for any primal algorithm, what we need to do is to find an improving direction in dimension n, meaning that uh, we can move forward or forward or backward according to the given x. Then we, dis we determine a step size that is either zero or greater than zero. If it is zero, it is degenerate. And then we move and we find a new solution and an improving or not objective value. So finding an improving direction, what we will see is that we need to find a cycle, a negative cost cycle. The residual problem. We start with the LP that, we, that was given, and we make a change of variable. According to XK, what is the possible movement? And we get this. So we replace X by XK plus Y. But since XK is feasible, it is equal to b. Axk is equal to b, so it is cancelled. So it means that we get the residual problem where we have a homogeneous system, so equal to zero, and we still have some bounds. And since this vector can be positive or negative, we replace it by two variables. One is increasing in the, say, right direction, and the other one is increasing in the left direction. 
But the one on the left direction, backward, cannot move more than the actual value of the variable. So let's look at a picture for that. So for a variable xj, the actual value at iteration k is xjk. So we can still increase the variable or we can decrease the variable and we cannot decrease more than the actual value. So what we see is that only the positive variables, we can go backward. Otherwise, if you are already at zero, you can only increase. So the re residual problem reads like this. So we have a homogeneous system. The initial columns and cost are the same for the forward direction. And for those that can decrease, only those that are positive, then we have the reverse column and the reverse cost. And this is called the residual problem. So we see that we have upper bounds on the variable that decreases, and we have lower bounds only for the variable that can increase. J is the set of the original variables, and PK is the set of positive variables at iteration K. So this is the set of the the set of the subset of variables for the residual problem. We have the original variables, which are divided in two parts, those that are positive and those that are at zero. And the residual problem will have a set of additional variables, those that can decrease. So the variables that can decrease are the backward variables for that were already positive. And these, the parameters are negative cost and negative of the column. And this is the set of the residual variables at iteration k. So it's just a bit larger than the original set, but only those that are positive can decrease. The homogeneous system would say all the variables greater than or equal to zero, it's a cone, a polyhedral cone. It has only one extreme point and a finite set of extreme rays. Usually we add a normalizing constraint. Denzig and Tapa suggested that the sum of the variable be equal to one. There are other versions, say weighted versions with positive weights, but we will stick to that uh, simplified version. So given the sum of the variables, we cut the cone and we obtain extreme points rather than extreme rays. These are in a one-to-one -one correspondence with the extreme rays. And an extreme point like this is called a cycle. So a cycle is satisfies the homogeneous system and the sum of the variables is equal to one. A cycle can also be given as only the positive variables that are used in the cycle. All the others are zero. So given the variables that are greater than zero, this is the uh, description of the cycle. The set of the cycles at iteration k is called ck. So the cost of a cycle is the number of variables in the cycle times the usual cost given the values of the uh, y variables. A negative cycle is a cycle with a negative cost. So rather than saying that we have a negative cost cycle, we say negative cycle. Note that if we have kept the extreme rays, the negative cost would be minus infinity. The normalization allows them to be differentiated. So we can see that, oh, this one is better than the other one because now we have values that are finite. So an example on a network. So this is a cycle of cost 100. 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40. This is the usual way. 
uh, the definition that I gave is four times, oh, the flow is one over four. And it gives again 100. So we see that these variables added together, they give zero. And the normalizing constraint equal to one, put a flow of one over four on each variable. Reduced cost, this is a known definition. It's not only in simplex, it is for any dual vector, the reduced cost of variable is its actual cost minus P transpose the column. Important result, the cost and the reduced cost of any cycle, they are equal. The reason is that because of the homogeneous system, when you compute the reduced cost of a cycle, See, we have the cost and the part that use the dual values. This part is zero. So it means that the cost and the reduced cost, it is the same. So it means that the dual values are simply used to move around the information, the cost and information around the cycle. This is used in simplex. We will see that. So for example, again, on a network, cycle, the definition of the reduced cost of an arc is Cij minus pi i plus pi j. And you see that pi i, pi one appears twice with a minus and with a plus, same for pi two. And all together, they cancel. In the primal simplex, the reduced cost of all the basic variables or arcs here, they are zero. It means that the cost is transferred to the non-basic arc. And the non-basic arc induces a unique cycle. It means that all the cost of the cycle is transferred to the non-basic variable. That's why in simplex, pricing a non-basic variable is equivalent to pricing a cycle. But indeed, we are not pricing the variable. We are pricing the cycle, the associated cycle. There's only one way to write a, the column of a non-basic variable uh, using the, the actual basis. There's only one way. So this, this is the way to create the cycle. The variables that are used to write the uh, non-basic variable. Optimality conditions, if and only if, so necessary and sufficient conditions. Two conditions equivalent are given on the residual problem. If the residual problem does not contain any negative cycle, it is optimal. Other or dual perspective, if there exists some dual values such that all the reduced costs are greater than or equal to zero. And remember the forward variable, the reduced cost would be zero. And those that are backward, the reduced cost would be also greater than or equal to zero. This is equivalent to the complementary slackness condition given on the original variables. So if the reduced cost is greater than zero, the variable is at the lower bound. If the variable is greater than zero, its reduced cost is zero. You see here that if a variable is greater than zero, we if it is positive, we will have minus C bar J greater than o, or equal to zero and C bar J greater than or equal to zero, meaning the same thing as here. So it's easy to, to prove that all these conditions are equivalent. Pricing given a solution. So from the primal point of view, prove optimality, say prove that CK contains no negative cycle. Otherwise, find one and decrease the objective function. Why? Because all the cycles that we found, find are on variables that have uh, 
positive upper bound or infinite upper bound. So the positive variables can decrease. They are part of the homogeneous system. And the forward variables, they can increase as much as we want. So finding a cycle and the residual problem is always feasible. Dual point of view, try to find pi such that the reduced cost are all greater than or equal to zero. Optimize pi. Otherwise, try to increase the smallest reduced cost towards zero. So at some iteration, it will be here and then there, and then it, and move, it will move up towards zero. So this is, will be an optimization problem. Those two problems are equivalent. Solving the primal problem or the dual for the pricing, they are equivalent. So MMCC for networks, 1989 for LPs this year. So the variables that we have for the homogeneous system are the forward variables, Y, and the backward variables. So from the dual point of view, we want to maximize the smallest reduced cost. So mu is considered to be the smallest one and we push mu to the maximum so it reaches the smallest value. And this is an optimization over pi and it gives p. This problem is always feasible. For any value of pi, you can compute mu and you get, a, you get an answer. So, and the dual of this problem is finding a cycle with the uh, normalizing constraint. We see that the dual of, of this problem here has mu on all constraints. This is why we have the sum of the variable here that are equal to one. The sum is equal to one. So what we have seen before that Given a cone, we can cut it with the uh, hyperplane. We don't have to do that here. It appears totally naturally. Finding the smallest reduced cost or finding a cycle, an extreme point of this system, it's the same. So we see that what we what had what happened is that we have removed the upper bounds. So that this will give a direction and the, the uh, step size will have to find how much can we move according to the residual upper bounds. And in practice, we use the original cost, but analyzing the complexity, we use the reduced cost because we have seen that the cost and the reduced cost of a cycle, it is the same. So the reduced cost during all the proofs, they use the actual reduced cost of the variables according to the actual vector pi. Properties, UK, we have seen just by the uh, formulation of the problem, it's the smallest reduced cost over all the y variables. The objective function is always decreasing at every iteration. There's no degenerate pivot because given a cycle, we can move on it. We just don't know how much. And this is the uh, step size that is computed. What we have also is that the smallest reduced cost is non-decreasing, but it may stay at the same place. The reason is that if mu k is the same, is the smallest one, you can, you can have a cycle, you can find a cycle where all the variables, they have mu k values. So the average will be mu k, so it will stay the same. Otherwise, if one of the variable has a 
reduce cost that is slightly greater than mu k, so the average will be a bit greater. And what we have, it is this one here in red, special. At some point, there will be a strict improvement. And this is what we call the phase jump. At the end of a phase, there will be a jump and you cannot have more than n iteration, the number of variables to get that jump. So it will be, it is proven that it will be a strict increase towards zero. The number of phases on networks, order of number of variables times the number of constraints, or the number of arcs times the number of nodes. And for LPs, unfortunately, it is n times delta, where delta is greater than or equal to the number of constraints, and it depends on the coefficient matrix. We tried for several years to find a polynomial version, but up to now, we didn't get it. And this is an illustration on a network problem. So we see that these are the iterations and the end of a phase is given by the, the red dots. And these are increasing values for the parameter, what we call the optimality parameter. The smallest reduced cost is increasing towards zero. A nice property from a basic solution, an improving direction can be on an edge for the primal simplex and improved primal simplex. On this example, we start with the slack variables, say S1, S2, S3, S4, and the next iter in the first iteration, IPS and PS, primal simplex, will choose the best variable, one variable, and it will be X1, it's a maximum. And MMCC will rather take a combination of the three directions, right there. We don't see that it is better, it's just that if it can be polynomial, it should go by the inside, by the interior. That's why we were looking for this property for MMCC, which is polynom polynomial for networks, but we don't know for LPs. Phase jump, the worst case. This is all the, the uh, complexity analysis is based on the following result. And all the others, they use that result. So assume we have a network and we have a cycle of size n. So it means that we have n arcs. Each of them will have a value of one over n. So conservation and sum is equal to one. And all these arcs, they have a reduced cost, say equal to mu or greater than or equal to mu. So the worst case is equal to the smallest one. And then we have a positive one, say zero. So it means that the average cost will be, the average cost or average reduced cost will be n minus one times u plus zero. So divided by n. And this is equal to one over one minus one over n times mu. This is called the improving factor. On LP, we have almost the same, except that we have variables y1, y2, y3, and for a cycle of size s variables. The last one, say ys. So the sum of all these black is one minus this value. And the smallest value of ys, over all the iterations, it is called one over delta, where delta is an integer number. This number is greater than or equal to the number of constraints, but we don't know a priori what it is. On networks, 
delta is equal to the number of constraints, so we get this result here. On LP, we have a delta that is data dependent. MMCC versus IPS and PS. This is a way to compare the three algorithms, just looking at the dual constraints and then looking at the primal ones. So on all, count, on all algorithms, these three, we find mu, which is the smallest reduced cost. And we maximize this smallest reduced cost. So on MMCC, two sets. It is the smallest reduced cost compared to the forward variables on J and the smallest reduced cost on the positive variables, the reverse, the backward variables for those variables. So this was the definition of MMCC at the start. So two sets of constraints that are split into J and the positive ones. IPS, all everything here is optimized. P is optimized on this problem. Here we have a subset of constraint on which we fix the dual, the reduced cost. These are fixed only for the positive variables, forward and backward, they are the same and they are equal to zero. And this is okay. The positive variables at optimality, they have a reduced cost of zero. So why not fixing them to zero and looking for dual values that satisfy these constraints and mu would be positive, it would be optimal. Otherwise, find good dual values for that. So we see that on the primal, without taking it, the variables can go forward and backward. And this is okay, a positive variable, you can go, you can increase and you can decrease. Now look at primal simplex. Primal simplex fixes to zero all the basic variables, the reduced cost of all the basic variables. Oh, this is strange. It means that the primal variables can increase and decrease for all the basic variables, which is not true. The basic variables that are already at zero, they cannot decrease. And this is why we have degenerate pivots. It is this constraint here is okay for the non-basic variable. We look for the smallest reduced cost, but this is fixing too many things because the complementary slackness conditions, they only ask for the positive variables to have a reduced cost of zero, not the basic variables. So this is what happens comparing MMCC, IPS and PS. We have the original variables up to here that are split in positive and zero or within primal simplex, basic and non-basic. So the residual problem, which is equivalent to the original one, only introduces the backward variable for the positive variables, while the primal simplex introduces backward variable also for the de degenerate ones, which is incorrect. And that's why if you find a cycle using these variables, you will have a degenerate pivot because the upper bound on these variables is zero. You cannot move. PS does the same as MMCC. It uses the same variables, the original ones, and the reverse of the positive ones for which the reduced cost is set to zero, but it's okay. So the primal simplex uses too many variables when it finds cycles. Comparison of the three algorithms, MMCC, 
the cycle is always feasible, same for IPS. MMCC has a direction and edge, face or interior. IPS, always on edges, and it's always feasible. The smallest reduced cost is non-decreasing and it has a jump at some point for MMCC. For both IPS and primal simplex, we don't know, it is just oscillating. The smallest one is moving. And for the objective function, both MMCC and IPS, they always improve the primal objective value, while primal simplex, if it moves, it will decrease. If it doesn't move a digit pivot, it will stay at the same place. Same for the smallest reduced cost, it moves. And the cycle is not always feasible. IPS complexity, same as PS exponential. It is shown on the Clementi example or family of problems where IPS, even though it is uh, always non-degenerate, on this family of problems, it goes around all the extreme points. In practice, both are efficient. MMCC, unfortunately, doesn't work at all. This is strange. It is a, indeed a strongly polynomial algorithm, and it doesn't work. The pricing step is too costly, even if it is polynomial. It is an algorithm by uh, CARP in 1970 or 73, and it is too time consuming. So MMCC, even with all the nice properties, it doesn't work at all. But there is a strategy that was mentioned in the first paper, which is called Cancel and Titan with an MMCC. And the Computing time is 1,000 times faster than the original MMCC. This was tested on this paper on a large family of uh, network problems. And I will take a look at that. In the first paper, the polynomial, no, no the complexity of this strategy was not, not at all uh, explored. It was just a strategy, a possible one. So let's take a look at Cancel and Titan. So we start with at the beginning of a phase. And we are given a set of dual values. So we compute the, cost, the reduced cost of all the variables. And rather than saying that we have uh, C bar J and minus C bar J for the positive, so assume that we call them D. DJ at phase H we compute the reduced cost of all the variables. So they are in the set JK, which is composed of J union, the positive variables at that time. And then we look for negative cycles, but it will be a type one cycle if we have only variables with negative reduced cost, meaning that on that cycle, all the reduced costs are less than zero. Otherwise, there is at least one which is greater than or equal to zero. And this is called the type two cycle. So only two types, all negative or at least one is positive for the reduced cost. And a phase is a sequence of iterations always terminated by a type two cycle. Because we have seen that when we have a type two cycle, we are sure to have a, an increase on the smallest reduced cost. So phase two is the end of the cycle. And then we find new values for the P variables, uh, the P, yes, the dual variables, and new value for new, the smallest reduced cost. So CT strategy is remove all the variables with non-negative non -negative reduced cost. 
meaning those with zero reduced cost and positive, delete them. Then you only have variables with negative reduced cost. So the cycles can only be of type one. Extract them the way you want. It doesn't matter. Any order, just find some of them. In networks, this is done by a depth first strategy. We enumerate them and we remove as much as we can. At most, at most the number of variables, because each time that we have a cycle and we push the flow or we push the values, we do the step size, one of the variable will be saturated, meaning that, oops, in the next iteration, it will be reversed because it arrives at the end of its uh, upper bound. But on that, on that cycle, it has actually a negative cost, negative reduced cost. When it is reversed, that reduced cost becomes positive and it is removed from the network. So at some point, network or problem, the pricing problem becomes acyclic. There's no more cycles. So what do we do? We need to find a type two cycle. So what we do is we can solve a relaxation of the primal pricing problem or a restriction of the dual, which is equivalent to find an estimation of mu, the next one, as long as this mu has the same properties and we retrieve, retrieve new multipliers for the beginning of the next phase. So here we don't solve the pricing problem to optimality, we just ex extract. It can be a phase one for linear programs and it is sufficient. As soon as we have a solution, we stop, we move and we update the problem and we do a phase one again until we, there's no more solution. And then we move to cycle of type two. A relaxation is sufficient as long as it is good. So type two cycle for networks, very easy. For LPs, we are still investigated, although we already have a few good ideas. Look at a network. When the network becomes acyclic, there's no more cycles of type one. The worst case would be, okay, find the longest sequence of variables, assign the value mu k, the worst one, and complete the cycle with a zero cost arc. You even don't have to solve the problem. You find the longest sequence and you complete that. And the estimation is, in this case, one minus one over S, which is greater than or equal to this value here. And this is sufficient to have the convergence of the algorithm. It is the same kind of result. It is just that rather than using the true reverse arcs to complete a cycle, we create one or we create many with zero cost and we use them. This is a relaxation of the residual problem or the pricing problem because we assume that we know that these arcs exist although they might not exist and it's a relaxation and this strategy used on networks you see that the blue line is using this strategy here to get the uh, cycle of type two the black line is the true value if we would have solved at every iteration. And we see that those are extremely close. They're almost the same. And so it means that on networks, we never solve the pricing problem. Type one are enumerated. Type two is just looking at the longest path and adding an R. And we arrive at the concluding remarks. Residual problem is equivalent to the original one. And this is a fundamental property. We see that on the residual problem, all the directions, they are on that problem. And these directions improving, they are negative cycles. 
nothing less. So all the algorithms, the primal algorithms, they, this is what they do. They have an equality system. This is replaced by an equality system with zero right hand side. And the combination of the variables are cycles. And if we find negative cycles, we can move. And the dual values, they are simply used to move the cost information. For example, on simplex, primal simplex, all the information is moved on the non-basic variables. So we only have to price the non-basic variables without finding, or we find automatically a cycle, which is associated. So it means that degeneracy is only algorithmic. Degenerate pivots, it's only algorithmic. You can optimize the smaller reduced cost. And if you impose that the reduced cost are zero for the positive variables or a subset, it's okay. If you choose that subset to be all the positive variables, it gives IPS and there's no degenerate pivots. If you say, I will optimize everything, I don't fix anything, you get MMCC. In between, you get algorithms that have no degeneracy and they move towards optimality. MMCC for LP, pseudo polynomial, order of n times delta faces. The proof is about, about this. We know that we have a jump at the end of a phase. We need to compute how many phases we should have to get optimality. Indeed, we compute the number of faces. This is a marker. So we need to compute how many faces to get to improve by half. And next, the proof is, is shown that each time that you cancel or you saturated a variable or an arc, the arc is reversed, so the reduced cost become positive. At some point, it is so positive compared to the smallest reduced cost that it cannot be anymore on any cycle. So it means that the variable is removed. So the, the, all the complexity analysis is based on the jump, and at some point, the variables that are that have a reduced cost that is positive, they are removed one by one. So the complexity analysis shows that the number of faces to do that and keeping only at, in the end, the variables that have a reduced cost of zero, and that's the end, there's no more uh, cycles that are negative. It is order of n delta faces or n m in network. Heuristics are sufficient for finding type one cycles, meaning that you can do many things here. For example, you can say, okay, I remove all the reduced costs that are greater than zero and zero. And temporarily, I remove also all the reduced costs that are negative, but uh, I keep only the, those that are very negative. And more, I keep only the variables with the residual capacity or upper bound that is large. So that each time that I find a cycle, when I will push the flow or the values, I will get a very big improvement in the uh, primal side, in the objective function. And you can reintroduce the deleted variable with reduced, negative reduced cost so that you find all the type one cycles to end the phase. And next you move to the end of the phase and you solve indeed only one pricing problem to end the phase rather than one pricing problem per iteration. And this pricing problem can be solved optimally or a relaxation of it can be solved and it is sufficient. 
and this is the end. And in blue, you see the Cahier du Gérard, Minimum Mean Cycle Cancelling by Jean Bertrand and myself. And by the way, it was accepted yesterday. And that's it.